friends of mine, and I just appreciate them being here today. Uh, we have resumed our regular office hours. So we are, the office is open Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to noon. If you want to come, you want to show up, I suggest maybe just call ahead of time because sometimes we do have appointments and so we are out of the office. Occasionally, we actually have office hours scheduled. Sunday School with Alex, you might have heard that going on when you walked in. If you got here early enough, Alex is uh, doing Sunday School in here. We're a little bit spaced out here, a little more elbow room, and, uh, trying to follow through with some of the social distancing. But also, we're streaming that um, on Zoom. So if you're not here and you want to be a part of that Sunday School class, you can get connected through Zoom. All that stuff is on Facebook. right here. He's up here turning red right now as I point him out, but you can get me later. So, he is graduating and his party is on June the 28th. On, so that's a Sunday afternoon. So you're welcome to come here and that's here also. So both of those are not going yet. And so Rochelle, Rochelle, raise your hand. She is doing Zoom for kids. And one's for like preschoolers, the younger kids, and then ones, the ones at 7 o'clock. If you need the information to get connected there, it's on Facebook, on our group, or you can see the show afterwards and she can get you connected there too. Brown City Family Camp is on. We are looking at doing a few things differently. We're not sure exactly all of it, but we're meeting once again this Tuesday, so uh, we're trying to flesh it out to, to make it work. you got to realize that's a huge thing. So with all of that, that's a lot of planning that has to happen. You all understand that everything just went really fast. Like we were social distancing, masks, making sure everybody was doing everything right. So all of a sudden, things opened up, things kind of got more relaxed. All of a sudden, we're able to have camp where we didn't think that was going to happen. Technically, the board, the board we were discussing about doing virtual camp. And so now we're doing camp but it may look a little different. So just be patient with us as we get more down there. And so that is a bit of a, a chore getting all that uh, taken care of. But I'm excited for that. Father's Day is next Sunday, June 21st. So don't forget to honor your dad. And then we have a prayer and praise box uh, that is right over there in the corner by the flowers. If you have a prayer request or you want to write something down, you can stick it in there. And uh, we'll either put it in the bulletin. If you don't want it in the bulletin, just say, don't add the bulletin, and we'll just keep it private here and pray for it, whatever you have going on. That's a lot there. We're going to get back to the announcement I was doing anymore. So we appreciate his uh, hard work on all these things. Uh, we're going to pray, and then I'm going to turn things over to I'll just stop by the offering. Um, we have the offering the plates at the back. Father, thank you so much for all that you do. God, we just praise you that you are in control. Lord, our world sometimes just seems out of control. And it seems so foreign to us at times. And I just pray, God, that you would give us strength to walk through each new day. And that we might be encouraged by it. We pray this together in worship the Lord. Uh, worship session by singing the song called Let and the Voice. Everything was created by God in every and everything should be singing your praise. We certainly are going to this morning, so uh, let's go ahead and sing. Say Mary. 
agony you, you endured on the cross, but Lord, we know you overcame.
praise you that you had a plan, a plan to redeem mankind, a plan to redeem, to redeem everyone in this room. God, we sometimes get so overwhelmed by what happens in our lives, by what's going on inside. There's times when we get down and we believe the lies that the enemy breathes into our head that we're not worth it. We're not, you're not going to listen to us. You don't care. But you do. You overcame. You provided a way for us. We pray for this. God, I pray this morning for those that are struggling and those that are hurting, those that are hitting incredibly hard financial times and the stress of family uh, being together so much in one spot over the last couple of months has really weighed heavy. For those who haven't been able to connect with family, God, we do know those that have gotten sick with the virus that has gone around. Uh, some have had hardly any symptoms and have found themselves in the hospital for whatever reason and not been able to connect with the family. God, you are over all. We praise you for that. You're bringing us back together. In your name we pray. Amen. If you take your Bibles, we're going to be in the book of Hebrews again today. And uh, Hebrews chapter 2. So that's in the New Testament. In fact, that's Probably about of the Old Testament, God's people, you'll find that there are waves of times when they follow God, and it seems like they follow Him with all their heart, all their mind, all their soul, and their strength, and then it falls apart. And there's times when different flavor because of our ideology, but it's nothing new. There's always been times where it's been. If you want to turn, you can turn to it. First book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1. First of all, made in God's image. If you look at Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 7, I'm going to refer to that, and then I'm going to read beyond that. So, to begin with, we are created in God's image. It's serious. God made us in, our image, in His image. Now, I want to point out some of those image things. How many of you like to build or create? How many of you like to solve puzzles? Yes. God. How many of you like to eat? There's an odd eating talked about in the back in the Bible. <laughs> I understand that there's going to be a big banquet. I don't want to miss it. There are so many things, markers on us, just in the way that we behave day in and day out, that point to our Creator, who is God Almighty. And I love that. He said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground Everything that has the breath of life in it, I give you, or I give every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. So God gives us this dominion over all of creation. He grants that to us. He doesn't say, Hey, you know, humans and baboons and elephant seals. I'm going to give you dominion. He gives humanity dominion over all of creation. 
That's important for us to understand. We're created in his, in his image, in his likeness. Okay? We've been knit together in our mother's womb by him. And he's given us dominion ideas that, that sometimes we don't think about a whole lot. I pray that it would really awaken our ideas, it would awaken our hearts for you. That we would be reminded about how far you have gone to reach your prized creation and that as the scripture is open. Amen. So mankind was placed over all of creation to rule. And as we look at the chapter 2 of Hebrews, it begins to address this order that has been handed down by quoting from angels that he has subjected the world to come about which we are speaking. But there is a place where someone has testified, and this is the quote from Psalm 8, What is mankind that you are mindful of them? A son of man that you came for him. You made them a little lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. In putting everything under them, God left nothing that is not subject to them. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to them, but we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death, so that by the grace of Psalm 8, verses 4 through 6, and then it also refers to Psalm 110, verse 1. So what the author of Hebrews is drawing from here is not uh, to mention or this is where the Hebrews author is drawing from, and also from Genesis chapter 1. So I've entitled the message of King King Stand. Number one, God created this world in perfection. If you understand the creation process that we're given in Genesis 1, all of creation was created perfectly. Or made subject all things to a perfect humanity. So the world creation was perfect. Humanity at that point was perfect. And God gave his perfect creation. So the perfect humanity. Number three, he created humans a little lower than the angels. But gave humans authority to rule over this created world. Okay, so that's not what he gave angels. Number four, in Genesis 3, we read about the fall of humanity. Where humanity, or humans, Adam and Eve, sinned. They did what God said not to do. And because of it, the curse over all of creation and over all of humanity was handed down. Number five, the perfect order of things was corrupted. So there's just five things I want you to understand. God created in perfection, and he created. Speaking of humanity initially, but you'll find that in the Old Testament, a lot of times in Psalms and in some of the other prophetic works, it is meant, it's applied directly to Jesus. So in the Old Testament, the psalmist is writing and contemplating about humanity and its flaws and its weakness. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about yourself? God, why do you love me? Why do you ever? Have you ever said this to yourself? You don't have to raise your hand. Will I ever get it? This man that you are mindful of him. What are we to God? And sometimes I wonder if the writers of these biblical works, as the Holy Spirit is inspiring them to write, I, did the did the psalmist understand that we thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago was also to be applied to Jesus the Savior? The Messiah? So before the Old Testament readers ever could understand 
what was really happening. You see, Jesus and I, I want to just really take you through several different things that I find in the Hebrew passage that also is in Psalm 8. You may say, well, Pastor, where are you going with this? This is a lot of stuff that you're giving in here. I need to say all this because I want you to understand that when Jesus came to this earth, he was made to be like us. And last week I was trying to, to pound this tiny little staple. I got this big old hammer and I'm working and trying to get this thing started. And guess what I did? Smash my finger. And it hurt. So I had somebody that was with me try to do it. They smashed their finger too. And it's usually a cut. It's a scar. It's a purple nail. A missing nail. With your hands. I want to just digress for a minute. Can you imagine... Jesus out working in his shop. <laughs> it says that he experienced everything like we did. I wonder. Well, jump around and say, well, well, bless you. <laughs> I'm sure he didn't swear. But he might have danced around a little bit. If he was younger, he might have cried. I don't know, I wanted to cry last week when I did it, so... He experienced that Jesus was made to be like us. He understood what it was like to, to work. He understood what it was like to live. He understood the financial part of things. Things we don't think about, the day-to-day -day things. Hey, his dad Joseph may have said, Hey, Jesus, we really got to get that done. You're kind of moving slow. Can you get that done? Focus on this, Jesus. The deadlines. The weird things that we just don't think about. But the word here that is used in Hebrews, which may be a little bit different in understanding in Psalms, the word used here that the author of Hebrews used means a little lower. But it's not just angels, but it also means and can mean for a period of time. I love that understanding. That for a time, Jesus came down from his father's throne and made himself lower positionally than the angels. I can imagine this conversation in, in heaven, and, and it's hard to understand the Trinity because there's God the Father, and there's God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and they're one, and Jesus the Son is the exact representation of the Father. But at some point in time, the Father has the Son head to earth. And so the crown is taken off and whatever splendor and majesty of the heavenly realms is set aside for a time. And Jesus is born as a baby, enters this world as a baby, about as humble as you can get. And he enters this world as a baby. And so he needs to be cared for and taken care of. Jesus experienced both for us. He experienced the positional, being made a little lower, and he experienced a life time as a human. You may say, well, Pastor, I thought Jesus was crucified at about age 33. True. But now, look at it and see how long people tended to live back then. It wasn't that long. And so Jesus at 33 was probably right there at that midlife 
at least, if not even further. So he experienced that. Number two, all things have been made subject to Christ. It's hard to look around and agree with this reality. And let me, let me just explain that. If Jesus is in charge of everything and everything is subject to him, then why are there so many things out of control? You ever thought about that? Here's the question. If God's a good God, why is there so much evil in the world? Oh, I see what you're saying now. If Jesus is in charge and everything's been made subject to him, then why is all this nonsense going on in this world? Well, number one, humanity corrupted, sin corrupted everything. All of God's created order has been corrupted. So God had a choice at that point in time. His choice was wipe it all out, start over, or redeem it. And he chose to redeem. And I am so thrilled that he chose to redeem me, to redeem you. So why is this all happening yet? Do you understand there's a process in bringing people to Christ? How many of you ordered your spouse out of a catalog? Anybody out there? And I checked over there. Check. Make them love me. Make them adore me. Nobody did that, right? Okay. So, what if you were marrying somebody and they said, I love you, but they were made to do that forcefully? Do you feel loved? I want to know that my wife loves me because she chooses to love me. You want to be loved by someone who's chosen to love you. Not by someone who's been forced to love you. Jesus wants you to love him and trust in him because you've chosen to, not because you've been forced to. There's a huge, huge difference. Could God go around and say, you know, Marv and Barb, I'm going to force you to love me. You're going to be my, lo my loyal subjects. And you're going to love me no matter what you think. I guess he could, but he doesn't. Instead, he says, look, I love you so much that while you are yet a sinner, while you still don't even really like me, died for you. That's huge. So why is there evil in this world? Because God is allowing time to happen for people to choose to follow him. He could just make it all good. Now if I fed you all ice cream today and I fed you steak, you all would like me. You'd be happy to, you know, to sing Pastor Rick's praises. But if I said, you know what? We have salad today and broccoli, and I see some of you out there going, already. And you're going to eat raw vegetables, and we're not going to have any salad dressing because that's not good either. Nobody would be excited about that. Well, maybe a couple, two or three of you would be excited giving you something that's good for you, you have to choose to appreciate and love me for wanting the best for you. Instead of handing me an ice cream cone in the midst of your diabetes fit, it might taste good, but it's not good for you. 
I want you to love me because I love you. Christ wants you to love him because he loves you. Does that make any sense at all? I hope it does. I hope it does. You know, when I found out that Robin liked me, I thought, what did I ever do to deserve that? Now, she'd say she was bribed, but we know better than that. I had no money at that time. I was excited, you know. My heart beat a little faster. I started planning ways to run into Robin accidentally. Right? And that love happened. We started to love each other. We decided that we loved each other so much that we'd get married over 25 years ago. Now we love deeper and in a different way than what we loved each other then. Our relationship has grown with her. She knows how goofy I am, and I know how perfect she is. <laughs> See, I'm a wise man. Our relationship with Christ grows day to day. And his relationship with this world is one where he is saying, come, come follow me. I have something so much better, so much deeper than this mess of a world. Come follow me. Now, I'm a little bit off track here, and I need you to understand that there's a reason why here. In your relationship with one another, this, excuse me, number two is all things have been made subject to Christ. And we looked at it. It's hard to understand that. Now, in Philippians, uh, Paul writes, in your relationship with Christ, uh, with one another, have the same mindset of Jesus Christ. So now he's going to tell us what that is. In chapter 2 he says in verse 6, who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. If you're familiar with the account of Jesus, before he's arrested, he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. And there he wrestles with this whole thing, and he prays three different times. He comes back and finds his disciples sleeping. When they're supposed to be praying. He wrestled with this. He said, Father, take this cup from me. Take this thing that you've asked me to do from me. But not my will, but yours be done. And finally, he's resolved that he will do his Father's will. Even unto death. Verse 9, therefore God exalted him to the highest place. And he gave him the name that is above every name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So the time has yet to come when we will all bow to Jesus. When we all will bow to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Folks, it doesn't matter whether you follow Jesus or not. It doesn't matter whether you're an angel of God or a demon of hell, you will bow to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's what Scripture has said over and over again. And, you know, I want to bow willingly. There's a lot of discussion out there about kneeling and who we kneel to and stuff. But I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, the one thing I want to do, I want to take a knee Who created all people. 
of every nationality, race, and color. We're all made in His image and in His likeness. And I will take a bow and a knee to my Lord and Savior, for He is my God. Jesus is crowned with glory and honor. I don't know what it was like that evening as Jesus went and rested. I don't know what it was like to watch my best friend like Peter did get beat to a pulp. I don't know what it was like for John to be broken knowing they all ran when they should have stood with Jesus. But I will see the day when my Savior is crowned. You see, it says in Isaiah 53, 4 through 6, Surely He took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we consider him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He stepped down out of heaven and into our world for a time. He became a little lower than the angels for a time. into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. He's my King. And I have the privilege of calling him my friend. For he walks with me through all the junk of this world. And according to 1 John 1, 9, when I goof up, when I screw up, if I confess my sin, to him, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God is so good. I'm going to pray here as the worship team comes quietly while I pray. I just want you to consider where he's at in your life. You know, is, is he just a a guy that we talk about on Sundays, we pray to at meals, that we say we believe. Is he really the king? Is he really the Lord? How does your life look with Jesus? Is he in it? How many times during the week have you sat and thought, what would God love me? I want you to do something new this week. I know God loves me. And I'm going to love Him back. And we loved Him by beginning to follow His ways and walk in His steps. We don't always get it perfect. Testimony to that. But He loves us anyway. Pastor Ray, God's love is just incredible. Um, Jesus, we can't thank you enough for, for doing what you did for us on the cross. And it is because of your sacrifice that we have assurance. Let's go ahead and uh, stand up if you can, and we're going to sing blessed assurance.
Thank you for being here today. We praise our God that we're able to gather together. I want to encourage you if you're staying for the cookout, we have a few things that we can do to get ready afterwards. Um, if you're leaving, be careful as you drive and enjoy the day. May God bless you and keep you and may his face shine upon you. You are dismissed. No, I need it.